What's up, Nick fans? All right? I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, it's a uh, the most important, a uh, super, super interview. This channel brings in this channel Alan Han from MSG Networks. Man, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel, man. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. I know we've been trying to get this done for a while, for a couple of months. And, um, you know, things get busy for me as long as also with MSG Networks, as you know, I also work for ESPN. And, you know, when the playoffs were going on, I know the Knicks weren't involved, but I was. And so I stayed busy a little bit there. But now that things have settled down in the summer, for the most part, I thought it'd be a good time for us to catch up. So, so thanks to you and all your viewers for the patience. Man, uh, I, I am so happy. I am so happy bring you in this channel. It's a great honor, man. It's a great honor. Uh, uh, you are famous uh, in the Nick fans base in Brazil, okay? But uh, people who support uh, other teams also watch this channel. Uh, do you can uh, introduce yourself uh, for Brazilians? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, you mentioned it. So what I do on Nick broadcasts on MSG Networks, which is in New York City, and we we broadcast almost every Nick game and also the preseason during the regular season. And then we also do a lot of other programming as well, all based on the Knicks and Madison Square Garden. And so what I do is you'll see me in the pregame show with Wally Zerbiak, who played in the NBA for 10 years, and Bill Pito, who's the host, who I, I actually think he's been with you right on, on this channel. Mm -hmm. So Sometimes. Right. Okay. So we do pregame. I'll, I'll do halftime. Uh, maybe during the game, we'll do a couple of uh, appearances, a cut in here and there, and then the post-game show uh, as well when the game's over. And that's where we really have our fun, where we talk about what happened and we get into debates and arguments and stuff. And, you know, we've been doing it. Um, Wally and I have been doing the broadcast. This will be 10 years for us together this coming oh. season. And Bill's been there a little bit longer than the two of us. Uh, I also, in New York, um, well, not just in New York, but nationally in the United States, uh, I have a radio show on ESPN Radio, and that is a, a show that's heard from coast to coast, from New York to L.A., uh, and, you know, again, from Chicago to Dallas, like all over the country. And, uh -huh. um, you know, we talk about all sports, not just the NBA, but, you know, my expertise is the NBA. My partner is Bart Scott. He played in the NFL. He played American football uh, for the New York Jets and the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And so he and I kind of, he's very strong in football. I know basketball and that's, you know, what we do. And we have a lot of fun on that show as well. And then also for ESPN, I've appeared on First Take at Stephen A. Smith's show, uh, Get Up. Mike Greenberg hosts that. I've been on that show several times on ESPN, the TV uh, side of things as well. And I was part of NBA playoff coverage during this uh, season, the Western Conference Finals, Dallas Mavericks, Golden State Warriors. I did uh, the studio work on the radio broadcast of that series, the Western Conference Finals this year. And I also uh, hosted the NBA draft this year for ESPN Radio, which was the Barclays Center and was a very busy night. And for the Knicks, a very interesting night uh, as well. So, you know, that's kind of an idea of what I've done. So what I used to do before I got into this was I was a newspaper writer, a beat writer uh, for one of the New York newspapers. Newsday that covers the Knicks. And I did that for a number of years before I moved into the TV and radio side. So I, I've covered this team a long time. I've covered the NBA for a long time. It'll be, wow, okay. So it'll be 16 years I cover the NBA wow. uh, this coming wow. season. That's a long time. And I've covered professional sports for over 20 years now. Um, well over 20, almost 25 years actually, uh, since I got started as a, uh, as a journalist, as a, as a newspaper uh, reporter back in the uh, in the 90s when the Knicks were a really good team. So I go way back with this, but I also go back as a fan. Yeah, Chris has, yes, that's Chris's book. Now, I'm not offended that you show Chris's book, but over here, here, right? I make it live I, I don't with know. A Chris do you, Harry. Do you, do, you have, do you have that? See, that's, whoa, that's mine. That's, uh, 
I want this book. I want this book. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't know you, you can you can get it. I'll, I'll get it for you if you want. And then there's also, there's also this one. Right, there's this one. Uh, you can see I wrote yes. this one. And look who wrote the forward, Bernard King. Whoa. Now, Clyde, Walt Frazier, he, um, he wrote the forward for the other book I showed you. But uh, Chris's book is fantastic. It's really good yes. on, on those on those 90s Knicks. And, and I'm jealous because it's an idea I wanted to do, but he did it <laughs> so well. And uh, and Spike Lee now has said he's going to turn it into a documentary, which, why wow, that's going to be that's going to be special. Be uh, great, great, interesting. Uh, the, the, this documentary. Yes. From Spike Lee, man. Spike yeah. Lee. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah. He, uh, he's a huge fan. You know, he'll put his heart and soul into it. So I'm looking forward to long it. Long time. Long time, man. Long time. Yeah. I am Nick fan. I am Nick fan. Uh, since 92. 92. Okay. Nah. I start uh, because Patrick Ewing, John Starks, and video game, man. Video game. Do, uh, do you believe video game? Mega Drive. Uh, it's a video game. Right. Uh, Which Imbra game? Imbra uh, Bulls you see this Ver over my shoulder? Bulls, Bulls Blazers. Bulls Blazers. All right. You see that game over my shoulder right here? Uh, NBA uh, Showdown, 94? Yes. All right. That's when, that's when Patrick Ewing was on the cover with the, with the Rockets, right? Yes. After that's it. So this is the EA Sports game. Now, what you had, the Lakers, bla uh, no, it was, what was it? It was Bulls Blazers was the same like they they made a couple of them i used to work for this company when i first came out of college my first job i actually was working for this company ea sports and they did those games they first did lakers celtics then i think it was bulls blazers then there was uh I, I know there was one other then they just started calling them like nba showdown and that was that one nba showdown so yeah i i loved playing those games back in the day. <laughs> that nba jam all that stuff yeah so so when you when you became a fan that's the, the days of X Men, right? Xavier McDaniel, yes. And uh, when when Starks was first getting started, and um, Anthony Mason, yeah, oh yeah, he just just got there too, right? He was, and that's Pat Riley's first season. That's the very beginning that year when things really turned around fast, and you could see that they were going to be a good team. They were a good team for for the rest of the decade. They were one of the elite teams in the NBA. It was a good time to become a fan. There's no doubt about that. Hi. I miss you. I miss this team, man. I miss. <laughs> in Brazil, man, uh, in 19 years, uh, yeah. people like so much Chicago Bulls, man. Uh, yeah, well, because understandable. Michael Jordan. Understandable. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, I, 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 I love New York Knicks. I love. In Mega Drive, uh, I see Patrick Ewing na, playing. Uh, man, I love New York Knicks, man. <laughs> I I can't explain. I love this team. So I what? Like, team. was was there just one thing that made you say that's my team? Was it just simply Patrick Ewing? Like, what was it that told you this is my team? <laughs> well, my team, man. Uh, my but uh, in 19 years, I I like so much John Starks. John yeah. Starks in Mega Drive. Uh, uh, I I take uh, from the bench. Nah, in this in this game yeah uh so uh, start now nah, uh so well uh three points <laughs> uh <laughs> join starks in this game i i i, I put now nah, he started uh, of this team man uh man okay man uh nicks uh it's crazy man it's crazy in my life and it's crazy um man do you uh, you know now nah, in brazil uh people uh like so much soccer Soccer oh, yeah. is the most popular oh, yeah. nah, in Brazil. Uh, and uh, people in NBA like more uh, today. <laughs> Golden State Warriors. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you understand it? Nah? Do you understand? But uh, I start nah, when this team, nah, New York Knicks, uh, it's a giant nah, in the league. Man, uh, uh, I remember now. Nah, uh, Knicks and Knicks Bulls. Uh, Michael Jordan uh, uh, lost two games uh, yeah. and uh, yep. uh, and and back yep. <laughs> and back. Uh, yeah. like, uh, blood, and, uh, blood and ice. Yeah, nineteen ninety three, up two zero. You remember the dunk by Starks? Thought that was the year. 
thought that was the year and then yeah michael jordan showed up <laughs> man i i am curious uh yeah. when, uh how how uh, start né? how start your passion uh with basketball uh knicks uh i i am curious about this well um i wasn't when i first like growing up okay um the first sport i really enjoy I, i became a yankees fan new york yankees mm -hmm. and i was like six years old and you know they had won world series in 1977 and then 78 so i i just took to that and that was my first idea of a new york team and feeling like i'm supposed to root for where i'm from you know i'm from new york this is my team they won so that was cool And then I became, I got it. I don't know how much Brazil knows hockey, but I got into hockey mm -hmm. and Hello. ice hockey. And yeah. And so my, my parents, because they were from New York city were New York Rangers fans. They also play in Madison square garden with the Knicks and they played a new team that was made. That was called the New York Islanders who were from long Island, which is where I was growing up. It's like the suburbs of New York city. And they beat them and I saw them again. I'm very young. I'm a little kid. And I saw when they lost how sad the Islanders players looked. They looked so sad and it hit me. <laughs> uh -huh. And I was like, wait, like, but we were from Long Island. Shouldn't we be rooting for those guys? And my parents said, oh, no, no, no. we root for the Rangers. And I said, I'm going to root for that team from now on. And they won four championships. They were one of the all time greatest teams ever, the Islanders. So that was fun. So now I'm like, okay, I got the Yankees, they're winning. I got the, you know, the Islanders in the NFL. I got a Jets jersey for Christmas one year, and I became a Jets fan. Now, two out of three ain't bad because the Jets weren't very good. <laughs> But then I grew, I was growing taller. I was, you know, Growing up, and when I was um, 14 years old, I was over six foot tall. And, you know, everybody said, you should play basketball. Okay. So I started to play basketball. And so when people said, well, what's your favorite basketball team? I was like, well, I mean, it's got to be the Knicks. I'm in New York, right? Like, I didn't even think twice. Just who's my team? I, I live here. The Knicks. And so I started to watch more basketball. And as I was doing it, it was Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Like it was, you know, that era. So I watched that all the time on TV. But when the Knicks played, I would watch them. And so I saw Bernard King. And Bernard King, for those who aren't, and never saw him play. Bernard King is like... Uh, he's just he's he was just so strong like so like a like aggressive like he could just score on anybody i'm trying to think of somebody in the league today that i could say think of that player but i can't there's no one like him um because well, he was he was a big small forward strong he never got tired and i i just you know i took to it i i, I saw him score 60 on christmas day Uh, and I'm, again, I'm a kid, I'm 13, whatever years old. And so I'm just like, all right, that's my team. So uh, I got into them. And then of course, Patrick Ewing was drafted and he became my favorite player. Patrick Ewing became like, like you were just talking about how, like you saw him. I will ask it to you. <laughs> yeah. I, you will I answer just, me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that. He just became my guy. And that was it. I was hooked. So that's how it happened. It, it was, I just felt like. I'm from here. This is my team. I'm supposed to root for this team. And then as I watched them, I just, there were certain players, Bernard King and then Patrick and then other players who came along. They just became my guys. So it was a dream for me to later in life be able to cover them. And now to do what I do is a, I mean, it's, I, I can't even explain it. It's, it's not work <laughs> for me. It's yes. not work. I, I love doing it. <laughs> I imagine it, man. I yeah. imagine it. <laughs> um, Uh, I I I I want to talk with you uh, about uh, New York Knicks. Okay. Okay. Let's talk 
about New York Knicks. Uh, I want uh, your opinion uh, about Jalen Brunson, Isaiah Hardenstein. Uh, uh, what's your expectations about them? Well, uh, I expect Jalen Brunson to do what I saw him do when I was covering the Western Conference Finals, when I watched him with Dallas, and especially when Luka Doncic wasn't in the game or even wasn't playing. Like the first couple of games of the playoffs – when they played Utah, Jalen Brunson was a star. I mean, he got to the basket. He got into the paint easily. Now, he's not very big, but he's very strong. And he can he, he's a good finisher in the paint. He can score uh, when he gets in the paint. And, you know, in, in the NBA, if you, can get, if you can get past the first line of defense and get into the paint, now you're, now you're drawing different players over, to you. And then you can start facilitating and passing. And I saw him do it at the highest level. I mean, I was seeing him do this against, you know, the Phoenix Suns. I was seeing him do this against the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, this guy can play. Like, he's good. So my expectations yes. is that he's just going to do what he's been doing uh, and being a guy that can do something that, a Knicks guard hasn't been able to do in a long time. Um, and that is be that guy that can score and, you know, uh, facility, you know, pass and, um, you know, just make the defense react to him. I got to tell you, it, it's, it's been 20 years since the Knicks had a guard who went to the all-star game. 20 years. You know, they've all, they've had good time. forwards, Carmelo Anthony, you know, Christos Porzingis, you know, Amari Stoudemire, Tyson Chandler's been to the All-Star. Like, they've had good forwards. They haven't had yeah. great guards in a long time. So Brunson, you know, is a guy that can he be, can he get to that level? Um, how about this? The last point guard to make the All-Star team from the Knicks? You weren't a fan yet. 1989. What were you doing in 1989? Man, Mark nine Jackson years old. <laughs> was an all star. Whoa, Mark yeah. Jackson. Yeah, a start. A, a Knicks point guard has not been in the All Star game since Mark Jackson in 1989. Can Jalen Brunson Man. end that drought? That's the question. So I expect high end scoring and and toughness out of him at that position. Uh, I saw a, a post. Uh, in New York Post, né? I, I make it né? a interview with uh, Zach Brasiler. Yeah. Uh, in your in your post, uh, Derek Harper promised uh, Nick fans uh, will love uh, Jalen Brunson. Yeah. What do you think about this post uh, from Derek Harper? Mm -hmm. Say that. Yeah. Oh, well, I trust him. I've talked to Derek uh, several times. We've had him on our show, oh. and we've interviewed him. And, and I'm a big fan of of Harp. And he's not a guy that will, will you know, lie to you. You know, he won't say that just to say it. He'll, he tells you that because he, from his eyes, what he sees and his experience of all the years that he's played the point guard position, he knows what he's looking at. And I think he really likes Jalen Brunson. He knows what New York wants because he's played here. So he understands what fans want and demand and how tough it is to play here too because of how intense it is and he he sees a player that is built for it and will do well and i, I thought it was great to hear him say that um but i i i believe him and i think he's right i think nick's fans will like his like brunson's toughness they will like uh a player that it's like um you have great soccer players in Brazil who play all over the world, right? Yes. But when yes. they play for Brazil, it's a little different, isn't it? Like it means more. You know, you go to the World yeah, Cup. I agree. And you, play, agree. you put on your country's jersey and it's different. Well, in the NBA, I think when you grew up around the Knicks, like R.J. Barrett, little picture with a Knicks hat on, he grew up in it, right? Um, mm -hmm. when you have that, so Jalen Brunson, as you know, the story, his dad played for the Knicks, Tom Thibodeau coached his dad, 
you know, like he he we, there's video of him at Nick's practice as a little kid, as a little boy. Mm -hmm. I saw. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a little it's a little something different, isn't it? A little special. Yes, like when you have yes. that, it's like coming home. So I'm putting this jersey on now, and it's a little different because this jersey represents what I grew up in. This, so I'm home. So, yeah, it's it's special. It's special. Uh, and I like Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson uh, play uh, with your heart, uh, yes. your energy. I, I love your energy uh, in, in, in the NBA, man. Yes. Uh, you 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 talk now about uh, it's from New York, uh, child uh, uh, playing in the Knicks. Man, I I, I super believe, super believe uh, Jalen Brunson uh, playing well, na. Uh, uh, in the Knicks, man. And uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, uh, what do you think about the center? I, I find it, 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 I thought it was a very interesting signing because, you know, not a lot of people know about him. Um, and I, I'd be honest, like, I knew who, I knew he was, who he was, but I didn't know. Like, if you said, <laughs> what kind of game does he have? I couldn't, right? I couldn't tell you. I was like, oh, you know, he's a big guy, you know. But and then I started, like, looking into it, I asked a friend of mine from uh, the Clipper organization, like, hey, what do you think of him? And I heard a lot of great things. He's he's going to fit because, you know, with that, especially if he's with the second unit, you need someone who's going to be able to pass the basketball around, which he's a really – I'm told he's an underrated passer, a really good passer, and you need that when you've got a lot of – like the second unit, Derrick Rose, uh, Emmanuel Quickly. Um, you, know, you got guys that are going to be doing a lot of running and getting up and down the floor and trying to score. Well, somebody's got to be the one that can move the ball and keep it moving. Um, so there's that. He's He could be a better rebounder. I, th I think some of the numbers show you that there are times that he's actually a better rebounder than his stats show. And that's something that they, the Clippers really wanted him to focus on. Um He's not a bad shot blocker, actually. He's a pretty good shot blocker at the rim. Now, he's not a great defender. He gets into foul trouble, so you worry about that. But with Tom Thibodeau as a coach, maybe they can, you know, find some things and work with him and improve that area. He's not a, you know, he's not considered a uh, stretch four or five. Like, he's not going to, he's not a big-time three-point shooter, but he can hit the three, so you got to respect it. And so there's that. So it's a it's a sneaky, interesting hire uh, signing, and I'm curious to see how they will use him uh, in their rotation, yes. you know, and and you know what kind of impact he could have. But yeah, like when they did it, I was like, oh wow, it's not a name I saw. I didn't, was not expecting this, <laughs> but they were yes. clearly scouting him. Yeah, they were definitely scouting him, and they thought he'd be a good fit. So and he's still very young too, very young. Man, uh, in begin. I don't like it. Later, I like it. Yeah, uh, yeah. When uh, I like you, like you, man. Uh, I don't uh, know so much about the right. center. Right. Uh, I like it. Uh, yours informations and yeah, I like it. The center. Yeah. Uh, I I I I, I imagine it. Uh, Azaya can be uh, create space. Uh, open space, right. uh, infiltrations for R.J. Barrett, uh, Jalen Brunson, Obi Toppin, uh, yep. dunks. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe uh, Azaya can be useful. Yes. Uh, uh, can can op open the space. They don't uh, have they don't have a player like him, right? Yes. None of their yes. none of their guys six ten or bigger are really that kind of like a lot of the Mitchell Robinson, right? Jericho Sims, like they aren't. They're not, um, they're not guys that can play on the outside, on the perimeter. Yeah. So he's kind of yes. unique. They don't have a player like that at his size who can also go out on the perimeter, can, you know, pass the ball around, maybe shoot the three every now and then, but, of course, still have that size where well, on the defensive end you're not playing small. And I think mm -hmm. they really felt like they, they were lacking that last year out of their big men. So, you know, I, like – like you, the more I heard, I asked some people about him, and this is what they told me. And then I said, "All right, you know, I watched a little bit of video." I said, "All right, let's let's see how this fits." You know, it's it's, it's a very interesting signing. 
É, Mitchell Robinson, for example, I like Mitchell Robinson, but Mitchell Robinson uh, can shoot well. Uh, yeah. And Azaya shoot. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, I won't see uh, Azaya uh, making pick and roll. Pick and roll for Jalen Brunson. Man, I, I won't see. I, I am curious yeah. about this guy playing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I told you. In the beginning. Right. Now I am curious. Yeah. Well, okay. when you don't know about somebody, that's how you get. At the beginning, you're like, why are we signing this guy? What are we doing this for? And then. <laughs> and you're like, oh, oh, all right, all right. Let's see how this works. Okay, you know, like that's how these kind of signings go sometimes. Yes, man, I, I super, super want to know about your opinion. Who right? uh, you know? I, I, I will ask you to rumors. Donovan Mitchell rumors. Okay, I want uh, your opinion about this. Hmm. Never heard of them. Just kidding. <laughs> I've been I've been watching this for about a year and a half now. So for me, I'm not surprised. Like I kind of felt like this was coming. Yeah, you know, that's it did. It felt like you know, I always wondered, all right, so they come in here, you know, the new front office and everybody, they bring in um Johnny Bryant, who's, you know, was an assistant coach in Utah and very close to Donovan. We all know the story. You know, the Knicks should have mm -hmm. drafted him. Phil Jackson was talked out of it, went with Frank Nilekina instead. You know, the rest is history. Uh, Donovan wanted to be a Nick. He wanted to play for the Knicks. He's from here. He literally grew up, like, right by the Knicks training facility. Um, so it felt like, you know, it was the right thing to do. They didn't do it. And he became a three-time All-Star, and the Knicks still don't have, you know, they're still trying to find a, you know, a high-end player like that on the perimeter. So I just once I saw, okay, Leon Rose, William Wesley, uh, Johnny Bryant, like, I'm pretty good at, I'm not great at math, Victor, but I, I'm, I'm good enough at that kind of math, right? So it became, <laughs> all right, how soon before that starts to happen? Well, f what first has to happen is there has to be a breakup in Utah. Well, that clearly happened this year. Then they trade mm -hmm. Gobert. All right. Once they traded Rudy Gobert, you knew, okay, Donovan's next. And now, you know, it's a wait and see kind of situation where you're wondering. I I'll say this. I don't believe. Now, I don't know anything. You know, I don't, no one's told me anything, you know, on the Knicks side or anything like that. I'm following it a lot through a lot of my friends uh, at ESPN who do a great job covering this. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski has been phenomenal on this. He's got all the info. He's the one guy I trust on this. And, um, you know, anyone you talk to, Brian Windhorst, he's really good on this as well. Mm -hmm. And it's all that same feeling of not if, but when it happens. Okay? Good so point. That, good yeah, point. <laughs> that's, it, it, you know, like... If he's traded, no, it's not if he's traded. Today. It's when he's traded. So when will he? Well, not yet. Um, and mainly, I think, because the Knicks are trying to make sure that, hey, listen, we can give you a lot of draft picks, mm -hmm. but we don't have to give you a lot of players, too. You know, we'll give you draft picks because this is a really good player and he's 25 years old and it's worth it. But if you're asking us to give you all these draft picks – and then all these young players too, that's not going to happen. So the Jazz probably want to see, all right, well, let's see if we can get a be better offer from some other teams. So they talked to Miami. They'll talk to Toronto. I think one of the rumors was they talked to uh, Washington, the Wizards. Uh huh. I and did. they know none of these teams can offer what the Knicks can when it comes to draft picks. So that's sort of where we are. So – that's why I keep saying I don't feel like it's a matter of if. I think it's a matter of when. And mm -hmm. the only thing that could, you know, hurt this whole thing is if another team decides to give up something that the Jazz feel is way more value than what the Knicks can offer. Or the Knicks are forced to up, you know, put, all right, fine, we'll give you all the players too, which I don't think they're comfortable doing that. 
So the the thing that could stop a trade from happening is the Knicks saying that cost is too high and we don't want to pay that price. Uh, man, uh, in Brazil, <laughs> Knicks fans every day, Alan, in, in my direct uh, <laughs> in Knicks fans, Victor, uh, Spider comes to the Knicks. Spider <laughs> comes to the Knicks every day, man. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. I, I, I won't say yes. Spider come. <laughs> yeah, you, But, you can't. I, you can't do that. I, I'm telling you, uh, I've told everybody this. I don't believe it because there was some. Yeah, you, know, you probably saw them too last week. There was um, there was a day last week where a radio station in Utah and a couple other people just started jumping up saying, "Oh, it's 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 done, it's done, it's done." And mm -hmm. I checked in with a few people. I just said, "What is going on in Utah? What are you hearing?" And I kept being told, "Status quo. Nothing has changed. No, there's no deal. There's no nothing. Like you know, something could happen, but nothing's imminent yet. Nothing's going to happen yet." Uh, so, no, there's nothing to report. And I checked Woj's Twitter. <laughs> I didn't see him say anything like that. So uh, you can tell everybody that when Woj tweets it, then it's official. But until then, <laughs> we're all just we're all just waiting. I, I think that's the best way to put it. Hey, man, it's complicated. It's very complicated. Well, uh, you know what? Think yeah. about it this way. Are you a fan mm -hmm. of, of Spider-Man? Oh, so much, so okay. much. I I have a car, a cap. There you go. Okay. Well, <laughs> where where does Spider Man live? New York. Yeah. So. Uh, might as well Miles make it work. Morales, the new <laughs> Miles Morales, coming to the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel, we will love. Yes. This advertising man. Spider Man Four. Let's go. Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> yes, man. Yes. I will love this movie, man. I will yeah. love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He'll uh, be a lot of fun. The, uh, I think, again, now it's all, you know, it has to happen. Uh, a trade has to go down and, and you don't know, like, how, who is still on the roster because that's also a big part of it. But a lot of people are saying, well, he doesn't make the Knicks better. And yes, he does. I mean, he, mm -hmm. yes. He will make them not better. a contender, but better. No, not well, not yet. But that's where yet. you begin. You have to start somewhere. And so, okay, are you better with him and Jalen Brunson than you are compared to what you were last year? Of course you are. Oh. And last year you missed the playoffs by a handful <laughs> of games, right? So yes. this year you're better if you can make this trade. You're already better with Jalen Brunson. Okay. You're well, better with him. Uh huh. But yeah. this year, if you get him with Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett in his fourth year, you know, obviously, you know, him growing up, uh, you're a better team. And that's what it's about. It's always about, you know, that next step. Just can we just, can you get better? Can you get better? Can you get better? And each year, just keep building and building and building. That's, that's the plan. I mean, Victor, I know everybody wants, you know, you – You, you take the magic wand and you just go, <laughs> right? All right, we signed LeBron, championship contender, <laughs> right? We traded for Kawhi Leonard, championship contender, right? <laughs> Kevin Durant signed here, championship contender. It, it doesn't work like that. Look at how long with some of these teams it takes them to grow and build and build and build until, you know, it finally turns into – Uh, a team that has a nice run of a couple of years where you're like, oh, wow, hey, that, that team's pretty mm -hmm. good now. So that's that's what you have to do. And that's why if Donovan's 25 and Jalen's 25 and RJ's 21 and Mitchell's 23 and, you know, I mean, Mitchell Robinson, like, you know, Quickly's 21 or 22, uh, you know, that's what I'm talking, you know, like that's how you do it. Now they play for – Three, four years where there's consistency every year. They're together and they just work on it, get better. A couple of heartbreaks. You lose a round and come back the next year and want to fight back. That's how you do it. So, you know, it's it's not always you get LeBron and here you go. You're a championship contender. It doesn't always go that way. Sometimes it's got to be steps and steps and steps. So I agree. If they can I get agree. him, this could be 
a big step towards building now towards a team that maybe one day, you know, gives you a run. Uh, man, uh, I see, I see this point. Uh, the problem, it's not a picks, it's a players, uh, yep. like you said, nah? uh, and uh, I, I uh, like it, uh, a phrase, uh, I, I, uh, I find here. Um, when, when you want a star, you need to know how to give and to get it. Yes. Uh, I, I saw uh, your post uh, talking about this. Yes. Uh, you want Donovan Mitchell. Uh, yes. Yeah. You I would you... like to see Donovan Mitchell as a Nick. Yes. And, and, and as I said, I try to tell fans who are, you can't trade this player. You can't trade that player. You can't give up these picks. You can't do. And I say, well, what are you going to like? You walk into a, you, you go to a car dealership. And you see a car that you want and the mm -hmm. dealer says all right it costs this much money if you trade in your car we'll give you this much but you still got to give us more and you're like no, mm -hmm. no no not doing it i mean you have to give to get yes right you have yes. to give so sometimes you're going to give up and, and you know some fans are so you know they're attached to players and and i get it and so, you know, well, we'll give you these guys. And you're like, yeah, but mm -hmm. those guys are not worth anything to you. How do you think they're going to be worth anything to Utah? Like, you've got to give them a reason to want to make the deal happen. And I agree. You know, you're going to have to give it. It's, there's going to be a player or two, and I think it'll be multiple, that the Knicks would have to put in this deal that you're going to say when it goes down, oh, man, <laughs> miss that guy. Right? You're going to say, oh, man. I hate that we had to trade that guy. Like, that's that's reality. You're going to say, yes, I, I love getting him, but I, I hate letting him go. Ah, I don't want to give him <laughs> up. Like, I, I, you know, like we all see these trades that happen, but it's a reality. So that's if this trade, if, if the Knicks can make a trade like this, just be prepared. There's going to be a player or two that, you know, you're going to say, oh, I hate the fact that he's not on the Knicks anymore. But that's that's the way it goes. Man, I, I believe in six or uh, uh, five or six picks and three players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hurt, 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 hurt. But okay. Obi Topping. Could be. Could be. Keaton Grimes. Yeah, and he had a really good summer. So if you're Utah, you got to replace Donovan Mitchell, right? You got to replace yes. him. Well, there you go. That's the player that can replace him. And uh, Obi uh, Toppin I, is a guy that, you know, you you can sell to your fans when you make a trade. Like, well, look, this guy's a top 10 pick. He was a college player of the year. He averaged in the last five games of last season, he averaged 27 a game. He's had a 40-point game. Uh, he's playing behind Randall. Maybe there's more to him, and he's a highlight film. He's in the dunk contest. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're the Jazz, these are things that you've got to show your fan base. Hey, we've got – Quentin Grimes was, you know, on the all-summer league team who played phenomenal in the summer league. Yes. And we're going to need a, a guy that can play Donovan's position. This guy can do that. And then it's – and here's Obi Toppin, a top-10 pick, who was a college player of the year. Like, you've got to have something, not just draft picks, right, to yeah. present to yes. your fan base. Yes. And um, and that's why, you know, names like that, as much as I love Obi Toppin, love him, great kid, like family, the whole thing. So it's like heartbreaking to think like, oh, man, like I love having him around. Like I love like <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> I love like watching him grow. But it's going to it's going to take guys like that. Like, unfortunately, it's just part of the business, you know, like he's valuable and I would be happy for him. Because I would think to myself, well, now he's going to play. Like, he's going to yes. get to play. You know, because Randall, with Julius Randall here, he's, Obi's not going to play a lot. It's just reality. You know, Randall is a, you know, an accomplished all-star level uh, NBA starter. So, you know, he's not, you know, Obi's not playing more minutes than, than Julius Randall. It's just not the way it's going to happen. So for Obi, it's an opportunity for him to play. And for him, that's obviously important too. So again, I, and I'm not saying he's in the deal. I'm just saying, like we're we're talking hypothetically. <laughs> I understand. We're just saying these are possible names, and I'm giving you reasons why 
yeah, it's going to be people that you're like, no, not him, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine uh, Leon Rose uh, don't want Leaves, Obi Topping, and Emmanuel Kikley together. Uh, yeah, in no. my opinion, uh, the point is Emmanuel Kikley or Obi Topping in this negotiation uh, mu uh, more. Kenton Grimes and uh, Miles McBride or another play. Okay, I, I believe in three players, uh, okay. more uh, five picks, in my opinion. Okay, my mm -hmm. opinion, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, Utah wants six picks and yeah. two players, uh, Obi Top and, and from, unfortunately, Manuel Kikli, for example. Yeah, but uh, man, I, I love so much uh, Manuel Kikli. I know people love more Obi Topping. Uh, between Emmanuel Kikli, uh in general, I, I, I make uh, 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 the question in my channel, people like more Obi né, than Emmanuel Kikli. Hmm. Man, I, I prefer Emmanuel Kikli. Man, I, I like so much this guy. Uh, man, I, I believe uh, Emmanuel Kikli can be uh, so much... Uh, um, and can be a, a, a great player in NBA, in my opinion. Né? Uh, yeah. I like so much. Uh, it's hard work. Uh, 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 end of game. Uh, Emmanuel yep. Kikley training. I, I, I like so much this guy, yeah. man. But, yeah, uh, I, I, I think when, you, when you're comparing him and, and Obi Toppin, obviously two different kind of players. Mm -hmm. And um, quickly, I, I love... Yeah, I, I I'm with you as far as what he's about. You know, you understand what I mean by that? Like what mm -hmm. what he's about. You could see that he loves basketball and he's in the gym all the time. Um, you know, like they tell him, you know, hey, uh, quick, when you're done, turn off the lights because they know he'll be the last yes. one out, right? Like that's yes. that's that's the kind of guy he is, and I appreciate that. You know, in in mm -hmm. in New York. People are, it's a lot of hardworking people in New York. People put in a lot of hours. And when you're that kind of player, people respect that because you feel the same way. Like, yeah, yeah, you put in overtime like I do. Like, you know, that's that's the emotion. Um, you care as much as I do. And I think that that's what I love about Emmanuel Quickly. I also think that with the second unit, he and Derek Rose are really good together. And we didn't mm -hmm. see a lot of that last year. And that's why I feel like quickly struggled early in the season when Derek Rose was injured. Is he just, you could see it. He was kind of like a little lost. And, and Rose is such a good mentor around these guys. So the fact that you'll have Derek Rose back and then quickly with him as your backcourt, you know, your reserve, your second unit. I like those two together a lot. And, Me too, um, man. You know, so, but it's different because I obviously Obi is another guy who loves to be in the gym and only wants to play basketball. He doesn't really do a lot of other things. And, you know, another hardworking kid. He's uh, Nick fan. Uh, Nick fan. That's what I was saying about Jalen Brunson. The same thing about Ty. it means more to him because his family was watching these teams and that he knows the history, understands it. That matters to him. So, you know, but he's a different kind of player because he needs a guard to help him like he's not mm -hmm. somebody you give the ball to and he creates he's yes. someone like get me down the floor i'll get a couple of fast break dunks or i'll go back door and you throw me an alley-oop you know that's more obi Toppin, not necessarily a guy that you give him the ball and you know he can do things with the ball so they're, mm -hmm. they're very different players but personality wise so easy to be a fan of either one of these guys i totally agree with you uh alan i, I saw a, a post a post no uh but people uh criticize uh the size of jalen brunson yeah. and donovan mitchell imagine it. donovan mitchell come to the knicks yeah but, okay <laughs> people criticize the size né, of jalen brunson and donovan mitchell because yeah. of defense uh do you consider this a problem um <laughs> I think at times it could be when you play against bigger teams and they get you switching, that can happen. Um, 
I mean, to be honest with you, the Jazz backcourt was Mike Conley, who was 6'1", and Donovan mm-hmm. Mitchell, who was 6'1". And they they were winning 50 games and 48 games and 45 games and making the playoffs every year. You know, there's, there's ways around it. Um, but, yeah, you're going to play – you're going to play some teams that are just bigger than you. I do remember a team winning a championship recently with a backcourt of Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry. They weren't mm-hmm. very big. Um, it, you know, Man, you Derek can, Harper and John Starks playing together. Don't... Uh, yeah, different, yeah they high. were big. They were big. They were both 6'5". But I, I just feel like you can figure it out. And... Uh-huh. Those two guys are going to put so much pressure on the other team, you know, defensively, okay. that you know, you've got. Like, that's why you need Mitchell Robinson because you need somebody that if they do, you know, the size factor is there. At least you've got him uh, protecting, right? You need some other guys that can defend. I think R.J. Barrett, uh, if he's playing the three, that's even smaller now because he's you know six seven. Um, can he uh, become a better defensive player so he can cover for some things as well and switches and whatnot? So I understand the criticism. I do. I think it's fair. You know, they're not big guys. But while they're not tall, they're strong, physically Mm -hmm. strong. They're not skinny little guys. These are strong guys who can muscle you into the paint, who can get where they want to get. So, you know, I mean... It's man, it's certainly man. a concern, but it doesn't it doesn't stop me from saying no, don't do it. Like no, because <laughs> I know what both those guys can do, and they can both get into the paint. And in this league, that's also that's just as important as being able to, uh, you know, have the length to contest on a shot every now and then. Man, uh, uh, I know the culture, man. The culture in New York loves a uh, defense. Uh, yep. Remember, uh, remember Pat Riley in 19 years. Yep. Man, yep. super team yep. uh, defense. Started there. <laughs> Man, uh, I believe this team with uh, Jalen Brunson and Don- Donovan Mitchell will be more, uh, super more creative in attack. So so creative. I, I imagine. I can imagine it, uh, this team uh, two guys playing together. Man. That will be, I, I, yeah. That part will be interesting to watch too. Like I remember, uh, Stefan Marbury and Steve Francis, mm-hmm. and they played together, and they didn't know how. They were both so used to being the guy, so that was, it didn't work, you know. Like they just couldn't figure it out, um, but yet we've seen it. I mean, another one. Mark Jackson and Rod Strickland, they were team. They were mm-hmm. teammates, both drafted in consecutive yes. years, and they were both point guards. And for a while, they they did try to play them together. And once again, he didn't know how. What I find interesting is, is that Jalen Brunson has played with Luka Doncic already, and Luka yes. dominates the basketball. And mm-hmm. Jalen had to learn how to play off the ball, so understand like when one guy's going and he's got it i've got to still cut move whatever it is i got to learn how to play off the ball well he's already done it so if donovan does come into the picture it's not like jalen brunson's like whoa i'm not used to this no you very used to it because you just did it Mm -hmm. and you guys did it all the way to the western conference finals yes so that could work to his advantage the other example is is Clyde Frazier and Pearl Monroe. Man, they you learned... work with Clyde Frazier, man. <laughs> well, well, think about it. They learn how oh, to do man. it right together. They learn uh-huh. how to, yes. all right, if he's cooking, I gotta, I'll got i do this. If that guy's cooking, I'll do this. Like, they figured mm-hmm. it out. Yes. So I do think Brunson's experience with Luka Doncic will actually help him in playing, if it happens, with Donovan Mitchell. I don't think it'll be a problem for him at all. Man, uh, and then R.J. Barrett, man, I, yep. I super love R.J. Barrett. Man, I I, I have sh- uh, Jar says, Funko, <laughs> Funko, R.J. Barrett. <laughs> I love R.J. Barrett, man. I super believe in this guy. Okay. But, but I want your opinion, man. 
in your opinion, Alan, uh, do you believe RJ Barrett can be a future all-star, in your opinion? All-star, I, I think um, he was on his way the second half of last season. I think this year, and again, this is all the ifs, if, if Donovan Mitchell comes to the Knicks with Jalen Brunson, I don't know how... RJ will be able to put up the numbers that he put up last year in the second half of the season because he I don't know if he gets as many shots and touches mm -hmm. with those two guys. Mm -hmm. That's something to think about. You know, I just don't know. I he's working on his game. That's you said you love him. I love him too. I love him because he's got that same attitude where he's a worker. You know, he's in the gym. He works on his game. Like, he's very serious about his game. I, and I, I respect that. And so he could be adding an element to his game that we don't even know about. That we'll see next year and go, wow, he added that to his game? You know what I mean? Like, like that's usually what young players are supposed to do. Each year, you add something to your game. Mm -hmm. um, so he could, and I could say, well, okay, I'm wrong. He can be an all-star. But just based off of Brunson being a scoring guard, if Donovan Mitchell comes, well, he's a scoring guard. And uh, then there's RJ, who's more of a slasher and a driver and a guy that gets to the foul line. Um, and then you have Julius Randle. Well, he gets 20 shots, right? So he scores. Somebody's going to have to give back a little. Somebody's not going to be able to get all those shots. Now, if they don't trade for Donovan Mitchell, and it's Jalen Brunson, Evan Fournier, and RJ Barrett, then yes. Because I think RJ can continue to get shots and, you know, get to the basket and draw fouls and be that player he was last year. Um, I think he was a very tough player to stop driving into the paint last year. Uh, the, the longer he got into the second half of the season when he got strong, he was tough, mm -hmm. tough to stop. Yes. So I think it all depends on if they do or don't get Donovan Mitchell in a trade. I think if they don't, he has a better chance to have to reach all star status than if they do trade for him. Only just based on the fact that I don't know if he'll be able to put up uh, the numbers that people will say, "Oh, he should be an all star." You know what I mean? Mm, I understand. I yeah. Understand. Uh, and Julius Randle uh, can be better uh, <laughs> in the in the next season. Yes. Because man, uh, I I think Julius Randle a good player. Okay, but uh, in the last season. Here, here. Very it, much. For me, it's yep. the problem. Here, yeah. yep. here, okay. Julius Randle can be interesting uh, from this team. Uh, uh, it can be toxic, toxic <laughs> Julius Randle in this team, man. Man, yeah. oh, Julius Randle in the phone interview. Uh, do, you know, you know about the histories, yeah. okay? Uh, what's your opinion? Uh, Julius Randle can be uh, better in the next season yeah well last year was if two years ago was a dream season for him last year was a nightmare he was yes. you know he, he went from being somebody that all the fans loved and uh really appreciated and respected for all the work he put in to make himself an all-star and most improved player and a guy that really started to become the go-to guy on a nightly basis, and you really saw somebody that was a work, uh, a worker. You know, just played hard, had toughness to him. And then last year, you know, that was not there uh, a lot of nights. Um, mm -hmm. It just didn't seem to have that same attitude. You know, the fire that he yes. played with, and the uh, the drive and intensity. And then when he struggled. You know, you, that's what you're saying. It was. It started, you could see it. It was just getting into his head. And then he was listening to everyone. He was hearing everything. He was hearing the criticism. He was hearing the boos. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, you met and some. That, that led to that, <laughs> right? That led to that. And I think he, I, I think he really, I think he had a really hard time handling the pressure that comes with the expectations when you mm -hmm. play in New York. You know, okay, you're an all-star. What do we say in New York? You're an all-star. Do it again. Right? Like that's 
That's it. It's not, hey, you're an all-star. Great job. Great job. No, it's, okay, you're an all-star. Do it again. All right, you're an all-star. Yes. All right. Well, you lost in the first round. Now you got to get us out of the first round. Like, it's mm -hmm. always the next step. Do more. Do more. Do more. And so when you come back for the next season and you aren't the same player you were the year before, oh, you're going to hear it. And I just was disappointed that he wasn't a little more um, like my fault. Like I, I wasn't right. I'm not good. You know, I got to get better. I got to get better. No, it was always everybody else's fault. He never just said, I I'm, I'm not right. You know, I, the fans yes. deserve better. It starts with me. I got to be better. It just, he never did that. So you know, maybe this off season, he took some time to think about it, to watch how he played and say to himself, you know what? That's not the same. I'm not the same player. Like I would always say, watch two years ago, watch yourself two years ago, and then watch yourself now, and you'll see the difference yourself. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe he learned from it, and with the team being better, you know, better guard play, obviously, and and stuff, that maybe it'll it'll help him, because you can't argue with one thing. Like, you know, numbers don't lie, uh -huh. and when you're yes. averaging, you know, twenty nine and five. It's still pretty good. Like, like you put up numbers like that, you're a really good player. So you know maybe the uh, maybe the experience and then the time off, get away from it, come back a little refreshed and and understanding what playing in New York is all about a little bit better than maybe he did last year. Man, uh, I I understand you, okay. But uh, one thing uh, I hate so much. Uh, with Randall, a few seconds. Knicks with the ball. Pass to Randall. Man, I closed my eyes yeah. in the last the last games because uh, Julius Randall don't make uh, good decisions. Yeah, he holds the uh, ball. Yeah, I I blame that on him feeling like he has to do something. You know, like he feels like, well, I'm I'm supposed to make this play. I'm supposed to take this shot. Mm -hmm. And um, again, with better players around him, if if you have Brunson, if you can add Mitchell, maybe he realized like, oh, I don't have to take this shot. Maybe he's got a better matchup. Let him go. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe he doesn't feel as much pressure as I'm supposed to shoot this. Yes, uh, it could be that. But he's also got to recognize that too. Is is to say like, I can't be selfish here. I've got a. If somebody else has a better shot, let them take it. Mm -hmm. I understand, but uh, uh, another thing, uh, Julius out with the ball, uh, man, very slow, very slow. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, now with Jalen Brunson, uh, right. man, more fast, more right. fast. Right. <laughs> Julius right. Randall with the ball, uh, the second over, <laughs> right. <laughs> quickly. Né? Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, I believe that. Yeah, uh, but uh, Julius Randle, it's a good player, Alan. In my yes. opinion, no, it, but it, the the numbers tell you he's a good player. But you're right; everything you just said is right. Plays too slow sometimes. Everybody starts to stand still because they don't like. Okay, like you're taking too long, and nobody knows what you're going to do now. And those are things that you've got to learn from as a player. And you know, you expect a player to get better year to year. So you know that's what you've got to watch this year is. You know, can he get better and maybe understand if I got better players, let them have the ball. Let me just get down to my spot. And when I get it, quick decision, quick decision, quick decision, instead of taking so long, like you said, to a point where there's just no time left on the shot clock. Mm -hmm. uh, last question. Last question, Alan. Uh, what's uh, your uh, um, expectation with this team? With Donovan Mitchell? comes to the Knicks and uh what are your expectation not uh, Donovan Mitchell not coming to the Knicks uh yeah. what's your opinion uh what do you think nah, uh, about this okay let's do it right now no trade okay let's yes, just go no with trade. what they've got right now this team my expectations are they should compete at least for a play-in spot. Now, that doesn't sound great. I understand that. But the East is really good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to expect out of Julius Randle because two years ago he was an all-star and he was phenomenal. 
but I don't know. I can't, I can't bank on him being what he was two years ago. And I don't want to believe he's going to be what he was last year. So I don't know what to expect. So with that in mind, they have at least when they're healthy enough depth and experience to be a team that could be in the mix of the playing tournament. And then maybe, you know, win what they need to win and then be in the playoffs, like get those last two spots. But, mm-hmm. you know, do I see them as a top six team in the East? I can't. Uh, there's just six better teams than them right now. Um, yes. With Donovan Mitchell, I kind of feel like at least it ups the ante a little bit. And I think they get into more of that level where they're kind of like on par with some of those teams that are like, you know, fifth, sixth, you know, in that range. I just don't think they're better than the Celtics. I don't think they're better than the Bucks. I don't think they're better than the Sixers, you know, and Brooklyn, who knows what they're going to be. We don't know what's going to happen there. But right now, with Kyrie and KD and their roster, Brooklyn's a better team. So if I put those four, and I haven't mentioned Miami yet, right? I haven't mentioned Cleveland, like, you know, (laughs) but with those four that I mentioned, it's really hard to believe they can be an upper echelon team in the East. But they certainly, with Donovan Mitchell, could be in the mix to be a playoff team and avoid the play-in just because I think they've got great depth and I think they'll be able to score in the paint, which is so valuable in today's NBA. Get to the foul line as well. So, yeah, that's that's my assessment. So either way, with them or without them, I expect them to at least be a play-in team playing for a chance to play in the playoffs. I don't see them as a lottery team like they were this year. And I'd really be disappointed if they were. I I mean, it would really be, uh, even without trading for Donovan Mitchell, it would be a major disappointment if this team wasn't the very least playing for a play-in spot. Man, I I will remember uh, this point. Donovan Mitchell come to the Knicks, but when, when? In my opinion, Donovan Mitchell come to the Knicks. But when? When is the answer? Right. Not if, <laughs> uh, but when. That's what everybody <laughs> that I've asked around the league, that's what a lot of people feel. It's it's not if, but when. So that's what people expect. We'll just have to see when. And, of course, the other question is not only when, but what's it going to cost? How much? How much? <laughs> the price. Yes. The price. <laughs> yes. That'll be a big story. Oh, oh coming soon. Spider-Man 4. <laughs> <laughs> right. To a theater near you at Madison Square Garden. We can yeah. only hope. It could be fun. <laughs> yes. Before uh, before uh, I end this, the interview with you, I, I want to say two things. Uh, first, man... I super love your interview with Patrick Ewing, man. I I know, man, man, man. I love it. I love it, your interview. I, I, I need to say <laughs> to you, man, really. I, My I, favorite player. My favorite uh, player. You know, it's <laughs> me too. if you ever meet your, like a lot of people who say, oh, you know, it's my, I grew up my favorite player. And you're always afraid to meet them because you don't want them, you know, to be rude you know, or treat you bad. And then you think, yeah, I can see the jar. I see your Jersey. <laughs> and you think, oh man, you just ruined it. Like I, I thought I liked that guy. Now I hate him. But from the first time I met Patrick, he was, you know, he was awesome. You know, he, he, lo- he messed with me all the time. He always like curses me out or something like that, or says something that, and I love him so much. I'm always like, you can't ever make me mad at you. You can't like, no matter what you do, I'm not gonna be mad at you. <laughs> like, and he, he finds that funny. So, yeah, I, I love I love checking in with him, just seeing how he's doing, and um, the interview was a lot of fun when I got to do that with him. I, I yeah, me, me, anytime I get to I get to even spend a little bit of time with him means the world to me because I still feel like that, you know, that uh, that teenager who was fighting everybody on the bus who was telling me the Bulls are going to win. I'm like, no, they're not. He's going <laughs> to win this year, you know. So yeah, but I like that uh, jersey. I, That's cool. Ah, man. Uh, Patrick Ewing, man. Patrick Ewing, the book. Oh, yeah. nah, I mentioned uh, the book. Yep. I, I want your book, too. Yeah, I'll send uh, you the link. Has, yep. in, has in Amazon? Oh, yeah. Your book? Oh, yeah. I research. I research yeah. Yeah. later. 
Yep. Uh, I will put the link uh, from your interview with Patrick Ewing in the descrip description. Forgive cool. my English, okay? Forgive my English. I totally I understand. You've been great. I understand you. Ah. Uh, Perfect. Ah, man. <laughs> now, oh, now my Portuguese life. not very good at all. So I'm not even going to try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, uh, I in future, I will make a trip uh, this channel uh, from New York. Uh, more uh, 20 Brazilians with me in, uh, will, oh, wow. will go a trip. I I, I hope to meet you. I, I learn a little, uh, um pouco. Um pouco de português. Yes. Te ensinar. I know what um you mean. Yeah. <laughs> we learn. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, before uh, I want to say to you, uh, Wilson Ora, né? Uh, Carol, Carol's home band, uh, asked me uh, say thank you uh, because you, in Twitter, uh, share it our video clip man video clip <laughs> make it yeah. uh, with brazilian's fans alan so much uh, nah, uh brazilians uh, uh give me pictures now nah, from this video you wilson ora nah, ask me to uh, uh, say to you thank you nah, man oh. me too nah. thank you so fun. much you you are uh, the first uh, uh famous person now nah, shared this video uh man uh, thank you so much thanks so much nah, uh, for me for wilson Ora. uh you can uh send a hug for for him uh, i uh, <laughs> this guy uh, is <laughs> will be so so like uh, uh happy yeah. for this i was it was and, cool uh, i remember seeing it and i was like oh i gotta i gotta share this this is great so <laughs> yeah, that was fun. It was cool. It was good to see. Like I like seeing that. You know, Nick fans from all over the world and uh, the passion that everybody showed. And you know, no matter where you are, you know, you you're supporting. You're showing the colors, and you're part of the <laughs> you're part of the nation, right? You're part of it. Yes. So yes. It's great to see it represented, <laughs> and it was pretty. It was very entertaining too. It was very cool. So it's glad to share. It. Man, uh, and the uh, people who imagine uh, Brazil, samba, uh, uh, right. <laughs> it's the rock version, yeah. uh, the, it's the rock, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so ma so York, amazing. Go New York, go. We, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my daughter, uh, I want uh, a Funko from my daughter, Isabel. Uh, can you uh, send a hug for my daughter, too? Isabel. Isabel? It's, uh, Yes. Is it... You do you can send a, a hug uh for my for my for my daughter. You want me to say happy birthday to her? You want me to Oh, you just want me to give her you just want me to do one of these? Yes. I, give her, I give her a hug, all right? Isabel? Yes. Isabel. <laughs> I give you a hug. Oh man. Uh, man, uh thanks so much, man. Really, yeah. really. Thanks so much man, for your time. I know you're so so be uh busy, uh busy. Uh, and yeah. so bees, né? Oh, forgive, yeah. forgive. No uh, and, and the final, I began uh, wrong, <laughs> but uh, I am really, really happy, man. Really, really happy. Uh, it's very important uh, for us, Alan, uh, you and this channel, man. I hope you enjoy uh, and like Bill Piro, Bill Piro, two times in uh -huh. this channel. <laughs> I hope in the future, in the future uh, uh meet you again in this channel man uh really i i i am super fan uh from your job really you uh wally bill Pito, man clyde fraser i love the clyde best. fraser man yes. mike Green, monica yep. and so rebecca everybody yes, yes. everybody yes well okay. when when you get when you get everybody and get a chance to visit New York and 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 it come to a Knicks game, you let me know, and we'll have yeah. you guys come into the studio for the post game and come see us on the post game show uh, and and see it see the see it happen live cool. and maybe you can even do a podcast you know like somewhere <laughs> uh, you know nearby or something like that a Brazilian steakhouse or something and yeah. um, and we can <laughs> uh, and we can jump in there but this this is this was a lot of fun. And I admire what you're doing. 
I mean, I mean this oh. because, and that's why I felt so bad that I kept telling you not now, not now, because I didn't want to come on and then say to you, I got 10 minutes or I got 20 minutes. I didn't want to not be, you know, focused. Like I didn't want to be, you know, because, you know, what you do and there's fans in Germany, there's fans in Ireland, there's fans in the UK, there's fans in Africa, there's fans in Japan, China, Philippines. My page that I have, my Facebook page that I started kind of 12 years ago just for fun, it, I have people that are on it that are Knicks fans from all over the globe, like every continent. And I, I loved, I think that's great. So I think it's great what you guys do because you connect to a team that is so far away from where you are, but yet it means so much to you that I, I have to respect that because it's yeah. true fandom. What, what you are, it's that's real. Like to care about something that is so far away, but yet <laughs> it reached you and it matters to you. So I applaud everything you guys are doing. Keep doing it. Keep the faith. Well, and when this trade goes down, <laughs> <laughs> hit me up and then we'll uh, revisit what it looks like <laughs> and what we think of the trade and everything else. And um, and we'll have some fun when that happens. All right. So yeah. let me know when when this thing happens and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll do it again. Oh, man. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. And in, in this channel, man, begin uh because oh anthony dona yeah uh, uh i i make a uh, uh chat with him uh, and uh I, I i see the history now uh anthony mm -hmm. uh i comparate my history now i lost my my mom uh uh three years ago now and uh enter in depression sorry okay? yeah, uh, I, I understand man Man, I have my daughter, my yeah. company, nah. But man, it's my mom, nah. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's complicated. Uh, the Knicks, man, the Knicks. <laughs> I, I I see uh, uh, more games. Uh, NBA today. Uh, I, I I start uh, uh, begin uh, in groups from New York. Uh, and in social media, I know. Uh, I know. Anthony, in begin, nah? uh, I talk, man, I talk with a uh, mother, mother's Randall, Randall's mom. Uh, I talk with, him, with her. And uh, man, I, I think in Brazil, uh, you uh, pull cool, uh, uh, a channel, nah? a different channel. In Brazil, has, okay, uh, another uh, page from the Nick. But I, I, I want to uh, make different things. Mm -hmm. nah? And uh, God bless me nah? with uh, so many people interesting and very cool, man. Uh, the channels from New York, man. Uh, so great guys. Yesterday, I made an uh, interview, for example, uh, with um, Nothing But Nicks. Oh, yeah. I make it. Man, I make it. Uh, man, this channel. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> today, but uh, uh, in the last month, uh, I bring Bill Pito, Ashley Nicole most Charlie Ward, man, Charlie mm -hmm. Ward, uh, and uh, really uh, make me feel good, make me feel good, and I love this team. In Brazil, man, it's complicated, man, it's complicated. Oh, people love soccer, and yep. the Knicks don't. Uh, uh, I can. Uh, not contender oh yep. so right. long yep. time yeah my daughter uh, will be a nick fan uh, has a uh, four years old four oh. four yeah. and uh, loves the knicks my wife is tabu fans <laughs> uh, the, these days I, I i got it uh jersey from my wife and uh, i i saw to to isabel Bell, uh, I will I will uh, take it this jersey, Isabel. No, no, no. <laughs> just the Knicks, just the Knicks. All right, Isabel. <laughs> man, I love man, it. Man, I love, I love. Great, it. man, man. Uh, 
that's it. That's it. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, I love, I love this interview. Uh, I'm so happy with yours uh, from, from, for me and this channel. Uh, I, 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 I am a fan uh, from your job, man. I am a fan and so happy. Uh, that's it. Uh, thanks so much. Nah? You're welcome. And uh, uh, we make, nah, we hope Nick's, Nick's great again, man. Just it. Nick's great again. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time. We need it. We need it to happen. Victor, thank okay, you. This man. was so much fun. Take care, man. Okay. I see. E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue?